Welcome very much to this session on Powering the Future, innovations around the Johan Cruyff Arena. Now, I happen to live very close by. In fact, on a good day when the roof is open, I can hear the roar of the audience. And these days, with the European Championships taking place partly in the arena, there's helicopters buzzing around my house. That's not the reason why we're here, actually. We're here because the Johan Cruyff Arena is also a hub for innovation. And this year, this innovation has accelerated in many different ways. Um, so we are going to talk together with four entrepreneurs and somebody from the arena about what this means. And we're going to start with a really brief movie. Let's start now. Yeah, the Johan Cruyff Arena is a multifunctional stadium here in the Netherlands uh, with around 2 million visitors uh, per year. Visitors that uh, attend football matches and uh, other events such as concerts. And nowadays it became a field for innovation as well. My name is Sander van Stippout. I am Director International of the Johan Cruyff Arena and Program Manager Innovation. The Johan Cruyff Arena is besides a regular stadium, a multifunctional venue, it is a field lab for innovation. We invite companies here to use the data that we have to innovate on, to improve their solution, to, to showcase their business model and to help them forward. And that helps us in our own challenges. One of our challenges is to prepare for the future. Um, what kind of new techniques can we adopt to improve uh, the experience for our visitors? In the stadium we gather terabytes of information, terabytes of data really, to improve the pitch, you know, this is one of the most connected items here in the stadium, to improve the journey uh, to the stadium and to go back home, and, and also to gather insights to improve the climate in the stadium itself. Working on new innovative solutions really is an ecosystem effort, right? We had to find the right partners and build a thriving ecosystem where people collaborate. Okay, he's here, ladies and gentlemen. Sander van Stiphout, Director International of the Arena. Um, we already saw in this movie that you have a lot of things going on, a lot of processes in the arena, a lot of data is being collected. And what we're going to talk about is actually how you're building an ecosystem. But let's start at the beginning. What are you doing at the arena as an innovation hub? Well, when you say, let's start at the beginning, the beginning is uh, 25 years ago, because it's, uh, it's actually our anniversary uh, this year, coming up in, uh, in August. Um, I think innovation was always a bit in our genes, because it was the m first multifunctional venue in Europe, and therefore we had a lot of growing pains, <laughs> uh, pains that we took, you know, trying like to... Like concerts, things. football matches, all kinds of public uh, shows. Yeah, everything yeah. that, you know, it was not done in, 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 an, in a venue that was designed as such, as a, as a multifunctional venue, at least not in Europe. So um, a lot of lessons learned regarding the pitch, regarding how to deal with the roof, regarding hospitality and, and regarding you know, how to, to bring in the public and, and also bring them on the pitch and, and actually let them leave and be equipped for all of that. So a lot, of, lot happened during, uh, during these years, but more recently, uh, and that's what you're referring to. I think um, it all started perhaps, uh, I think it was around 2013, where the city of Amsterdam challenged us on uh, becoming uh, a true sustainable venue and okay. be a sustainability icon, actually, for the city of Amsterdam. Um, you might know that, that actually the, the city of Amsterdam is a, is a shareholder of the arena, so yes. they ask that to every single company that has stake, they have a stake in. But um, we took that very seriously. We, we said, well, we don't know exactly, you know, in what direction to go, uh, what kind of solutions are out there. You know, we didn't really realize what our impact was to begin with. So there was a lot, of, a lot to learn in that, uh, in that journey. We took that very seriously, as I said, and we, we gathered companies around us that helped us in that, in that process, analyzing the waste, also the, the energy consumption, and, and trying to, to make progress. Because, because I, I think that's where it started, right? That, that the whole arena became completely focused on the data of every single process that happens in and around the arena. Because it's a, it's a data game in the end. 
Yeah, actually, of course. I mean, um, it, it is also about it's first and foremost on on the impact. Uh, you know, sustainability yep. impact in this uh, specific case, uh, CO2 impact, carbon uh, carbon footprint that you have, and it all has to do with measuring. You know, what is it, and also measuring the efficiency of the measures that you take. So, yeah, data became you know very much paramount in this in this whole approach. Um, can, I, can I ask a few things about those data? Because I think w what is super interesting is that you you have the data that you collect yourself, and we'll talk about how you collect the data in a second. But but you also get data from the city. You get data from um, you know the train company, from the cars, the, from yeah. from the whole area around the arena. Um, and you, you bring all those data sets together in what is called a data lake. What is a data lake? Yeah, data lake is a tremendous amount of data. Uh, yeah, to be that's honest. it. And uh, it's just, uh, but, but organized. Lake sounds like you put everything in one box, but obviously it's, it's very much organized. Um, we, uh, we developed ourselves over the recent years and uh, we, we gathered a lot of new data sources or we granted, uh, were granted access to data sources. Um, and, and for us, it's, it's very important because obviously there's data that we generate ourselves, um, like data on, uh, on, you know, on the building itself, uh, you know, climate and, and heat, electricity, et cetera, heat, electricity uh, yeah. use, etc. Yeah. But there's also a lot of data that we would like to use to improve the journey of our, of our visitors. For example, mobility data. Um, yeah. And, and, and also, you know, when you would like to get access to the data of the, the railway or the public all the public transport agencies, of course, there's, there's you know, there's, there's a path limitations. to go through, yeah. there's limitations. So um, we took, yeah, we got a lot of progress over the years, and now we actually can say, you know, we became a little bit of a data hub uh, also for the surroundings, because the, the things that we're struggling with have to do with the surroundings as well. Yeah. Because it's not only safety and security, for example, inside the stadium, but it's also safety and security outside. So it's the police as well. And police as well. So how, how many data partners or sources are there? Can you give um, an idea? It's, it's difficult to put a number on it. I mean, uh, it, it's definitely going into the hundreds, um, uh, but that's a, you know, that, that's a rough yeah. number. But uh, for example, we have a building management system that there's so many sensors in that building to begin with. So that's already a tremendous amount of data sources. Yeah. To start with, and and so you combine data from many different partners, and then what we'll later talk about with some of those partners are when you do that, when you put it together, you can actually develop new kinds of services. I mean, then then it's no longer just about measuring the air quality, but it's about combining visitor data, air quality data, instructions to the visitors, and new things start to happen. Can you already? I mean, I know this is very early days in a way, but can you already give an example of a process that has changed in the arena because of, you know, all these projects that you do and all these data sources that you collect? Um, um, sure. I mean, um, well, if, if you look at, uh, we have a large uh, energy storage in the building, three megawatt energy storage, um, and we rent that out to the grid operator to balance the grid. Um, so there's a lot of data going back and forth to make sure that we can actually use it as a backup power supply and they can use it for to yeah to balance the grid and for yeah. their for their purpose. There's a there's a handling uh, there and there is also of course you know you deliver a service and you get paid in return. So th there's a lot of data flow. Uh, yeah. So uh, right it's there. sharing data is a business model underlying it as uh, well. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The most famous data, I think. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe you know, is the is the pitch right? I mean, there's a big story around the pitch in the arena, where is yeah. the grass? That grass mat. I mean, this is a Dutch word, grass yeah. mat, but pitch. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pitch is definitely. Um, I mean, we've been, of course, uh, 25 years ago, we've been struggling with the pitch, uh, the quality of the pitch, and uh, from actually an early day onwards, we decided, yeah, we don't want to rely on the blue eyes of the of the of the pitch manager, because yeah. you know. Uh, it, it just doesn't, we don't, we're not too comfortable with that. Not necessarily with that person, but it just, you know, we need more assurance. We want to build uh, more assurance. And uh, we've been measuring, you know, the pitch. Uh, we measure the quality of the pitch. We have sensors inside the pitch that measure, you know, the root temperatures, for example. We have uh, sensors driving 
on I, top I, I of just, the page. We, I mean, the roof it's the temperatures. Most, even, yeah, it's, you know, it's the most connected yeah. item pretty much in the stadium is, yeah. is our pitch. Yeah. And um, and interestingly enough, uh, we, we we've developed dashboards, insights, algorithms on top to predict, you know, what happens if we have a concert on Wednesday and Ajax has to play yeah. a match on, on on Sunday, for example. So how do we recover? Yeah. So we, you know, and then you link it to measures that you take uh, to prepare for the match on Sunday. And but but since, since this is so advanced at the arena, you also collect a lot of data. You start to predict and learn. I mean, this in itself is knowledge that other arenas are really interested in, probably, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, in my other role, I'm actually uh, also an advisor for other stadiums um, all over the world. We've been we've been active, you know, from Brazil to uh, Qatar to to India to Russia, uh, all over the place. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, that was more about you know how to organize a, a safe operation during the match, or um, how to create a positive business model, how to make a legacy plan. And now it's going more and more about you know how can you use a uh, stadium for the benefit also of society, that legacy plan I was referring to. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and we do so by, you know, actually using the stadium as a, as a living laboratory uh, for, you know, specific challenges that are also societal challenges. You know, if we would like to have a, a very smooth way to and from the stadium, but where we're trying to solve is, 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 a, is a similar problem as in the center of the city. Yeah. So how do you reach yeah. the, the city and how you go back home? So, you know, lessons learned can be actually scaled to, of course, other stadiums, but also to other city cities level. Uh, yeah. as well. There's one particular project I just want to briefly touch upon because it it's, um, speaks to the imagination. That's the digital twin ID, where you build a complete you know, digital representation of yeah. the arena and everything around it, just to be able to understand processes better. Yeah, and that, that, of course, that, that is also the, the, the vision uh, that we're, we are, of course, in, in, in some ways, we're, we're actually quite advanced, and, and in some other ways, we're not. So, uh, for example, regarding mobility, uh, actually, we're, we're getting reasonably mature, we're, you know, we're slowly maturing, let's, let's put it this way. Let's be also quite modest, because it's a very complex uh, area to talk about. Um, and yeah, what we're trying to do by you know accessing all these different data sources to you know actually making use of of smart algorithms, creating these algorithms to to determine the right inflow and outflow of the entire stadium area. And um, so, and then you can ask yourself the question: you know, what happens if it starts to rain? What happens if uh, it's not raining there, but it's actually raining in the south of Holland? Or you know. It all has impact, and yeah. we would like to predict that impact so that we can, you know, uh, take the right operational measures when we're preparing for the match, uh, and and when you know actually people are uh, coming into the area. It's it's complex domain, also involves a uh, lot of uh, parking issues with different parking providers, different road authorities, different, you know, public transport authorities. So it's it's not yeah, so easy. And, it's, it's, and it's not just about what's going on, but you start to predict what yeah, will happen yeah. and, and make that actionable for that is, all that the parties. That is actually involved. the question in, in all these domains. You yeah. would like to be predictive, you, you, yeah. because that's management. You would like to take the right decisions so that you you pro, you prevent problems later. Yeah. 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 Now. Um, we, we are going to listen to four par partners of the arena in a second. Um, can you describe a little bit, I mean, you already said, okay, there's so many partners, we collect the data, we use the data, um, but how do you work with partners? What are the options you have for anybody who's watching now that thinks, okay, I, I have something, I want to try this out, I want to work with the arena. What are the options? How do you work with partners? Yeah, well, we... Um, we have a, quite a thriving ecosystem with large corporates uh, like, um, for example, Microsoft, KPMG, uh, TNO, who actually signed for another five years yesterday, um, and, and, uh, and uh, some large contractors and, and some other uh, partners, and the scale-up partners, and, and actually the, 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 the people representing the scale-up partners are, are here yeah. uh, today, or a selection uh, of, uh, of them are here today. Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's, it, you become a member, you know, of the of the club. 
let's, be, let's put it this way, a member of the innovation team, and we're starting to work together to you know, improve um, you know, situation in, in our stadium, and on the same hand, we're trying to help them in giving feedback on future development and, yeah. uh, in, in the direction and help them with uh, their vision if, you know, if, if we can support that, and also help them uh, in their uh, scaling uh, endeavors. Um, so that is the way it works. I'm very proud of the of, of the companies that are here today because all of them have a different insight, and you will obviously all know this in in a little bit. You know, it, it's about monitoring behavior, which is of course very important for us. Yeah. Uh, it's about nudging uh, behavior. Um, it's about, in that sense, improving the fan experience, but it's also uh, uh, offering a secure and healthy. Uh, a healthy stadium uh, yeah. to the visitors, and at the same time, you know, in that healthy that healthy stadium is difficult to you know everything changed now uh, during COVID, so we're, we're trying to reinvent what is a healthy stadium. Yeah. What is that? What kind of measures? What should is we a healthy take? building? What is a healthy, what is a healthy building? What is so, healthy behavior? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And and as we now know, the measures are you know a little bit less than they were before. So, you know, things are changing. So yeah. and as things are constantly changing, how do we adapt? So we need continuously to get new insights, take new measures, and make new actions following the, uh, the data insights that we gather. Well, thank you very much. We're going to listen to four of those partners that you selected, and they Great. are really very interesting. Thank you so much, Ander. You're welcome. Thanks.